you and uh, thank all of you for t coming out today. Uh, I understand the weather's a lot better this year than it was last year, and uh, uh, let's hope it's always a safer year. Uh, Psalm 107, uh, written a long time ago, indicates that we've had the same concerns in the blessing of the fleet for generations. They that go down to the sea in ships that do business in great waters. These see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For he commandeth and raiseth the stormy wind, which lifteth up the waves thereof. They mount up to the heaven, they go down to the depths, their soul is melted because of trouble. And they on the ships, they reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man. And are, at their, and are at their wit's end. And then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he bringeth them out of their distress. Hear that again. He bringeth them out of their distress. He maketh the storm a calm, so that the waves thereof are still, and then they are glad because they be quiet, so he bringeth them unto their, uh, unto their desired heaven. You know, the fleet that we bless today does amazing things for Juneau, our capital city, and fishermen in Alaska do amazing things for our state. We have over 50,000 people who are harvesters, who are processors. Pray for them today. We have several Alaska communities that are the top fishing ports in the nation, either in tonnage or in value. One ship I helped launch last year believes that in a single given year, they will collect and, and the 12 fishermen aboard will harvest 30 plus million meals. We do a lot to feed the world here in Alaska. Here in Juneau, on the back of your program are some statistics showing some of the wonderful things that are accomplished in this town. 680 skippers and crew, 738 vessels, 489 processing jobs, $50 million wholesale value leaving this community in 18 million pounds. But more than that, you have the management here, you have the science here, uh, you have what NOAA is doing, all very important. A few winters ago, I had a chance to meet with a group of young fishermen who were here up at the church to learn a little bit about politics. And my advice to fishermen was don't ever leave your government alone. We had to fight. One of the first jobs I had in Alaska was fighting for the 200 mile limit, bring our fisheries home making sure that those fish are caught by Alaskans. Uh, when I worked here in the Hickel administration, we worked to de develop the transferable quota program. Now, Governor Hickel said, hey Mead, we're gonna get halibut year round, and that's fantastic. But the other thing it did is it ended the halibut derby, and it made fishing a lot safer. And we have to, again, not leave our government alone, uh, improve things. We had the Alaskanization of our fisheries with the CDQ program in Western Alaska. So, and uh, at that time, we realized that fishing was not a very safe occupation. In fact, George Conway reported that in the years 1991 and 98, of 552 occupational deaths in Alaska, 31% of them came in the commercial fishing industry. And that's seven times worse, over seven, seven or eight times worse than, uh, than the national average. But here's one thing to remember, and moms, dads, wives, children, the number of people who live after falling overboard with a, uh, with a personal flotation device on, seven and a half times better chance than not. So there is no loss of your strength to ask for that strength. I would just like to conclude by saying we honor today our fishermen, we honor those who feed us, we honor the Coast Guard who helped save us, we honor the weather forecasters and the scientists at NOAA and the Department of Fish and Game that help sustain this fishery. Godspeed to the Alaska fishermen and those who go to the sea in ships. <laughs>